Morning, guys. You know, I always say morning, but it's not always morning. It's one o'clock now. Anyway. You see this big machine here, the forager? I'm thinking I'm going to get it out and give it a bit of a wash just whilst there was a slight lull in carving. If I'm being completely honest, when we finished second cut last summer, the machine was parked there and that was it, did nothing else. And that's obviously not very good. Just through, I don't know, being busy and other stuff taking priority. But anyway, we should really get it washed down and sort of semi-serviced up, ready to go this year. So I've just moved that, which is like a tow along flail topper um, out the way. So it was there. If we reverse over that, it would have been a bad day. And I'm going to see if this will start up. And one of these compartments somewhere. Aha, this one. There's an isolator. Let's turn that on. We have the key. Hopefully it'll fire up. What do we reckon are the chances then? Oh, well we've got screens. Come on, baby. Yes, purring into life. Now I have had the hail drop, which is that machine there out this morning and just moved it. So it's now very, very tight to the forager. So I've got to try and not hit that. I've also got to try and remember what all the buttons do. And, uh, and we'll go from there. We'll take it down to the wash bay. Perhaps just make it all a bit wet on the front. Let everything soak over dinner. And then uh, we can go as far as we want to. We can take the head off and get it all cleaned out inside, get the whatever additives left in the tank out. Just give it a bit of a service up. You can't do anything until this computer loads up. So we've got to wait a minute for that. But on a separate note, not forager related, my favorite cow carved uh, yesterday or the day before, can't remember, one of those two. Um, and she had a lovely like roan and white colored calf. Beautiful, I'll show you at some point today. We had another cow calf about 10 minutes ago. We got another one that's just started. Current time incorrect. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, carving's ticking along, but we tagged, I think we tagged 13 calves yesterday. GPS area, yeah, there's domes on. Um, so like the weekend and yesterday was really busy um, and it sort of slowed down for a minute, but I think we've had 31, two, I think we've had 33 calves out of 138. So 105 left. See if this thing will move. It's in transport mode. So you've got to take it out of transport mode to be able to lift the head. Transport mode is that little button there going down a road. And then I can now lift the head, I think. Yeah, look at that. We remember. And we're in tortoise. This, should we stay in tortoise? I mean, rev it up. Can I get rid of any cobwebs? It has got a reversing camera. Ah, I always forget about the park brake. Where is the park brake? Ah, see, it tells you there the park brake's on. I was looking at the wrong screen. So that's that one. So you press that, and that disappears. Right, we can now gently go backwards. I say, we've got to be careful not to hit anything. This is a big old machine to do a lot of damage just clipping something. Yeah, we have got a reversing camera, which is handy. See what's behind us. See, so yeah, move the hail drop from there over to there. It's further in the shed there now, so it's not getting wet. And we might even clear out that corner and put the Sampo, which is that yellow harvester over there, in there as well. It will free up a lot of that shed then. We need to have a bit of a sort out where everything is because it's just a mess at the moment. Right, to the wash bay. Right, we made it to the wash bay. I'm hoping to actually bring you a good video of me operating this thing this year, because last year it didn't quite go to plan. But anyway, there she is. I was gonna say it's a massive great thing, but it's actually the smallest one John Deere make. I'm just gonna wash down as much as I can off the front here. All this chaffy stuff and stuff that's got additive on it is all sticky and horrible. Try and get that off, let it soak, and then we'll open it all up after lunch and see what we can do. There's John on big boots. Everything down there is now soaking. So I just had some dinner, so I'm gonna fire the old machine back up. I might leave it running for a bit as well. Probably do it good to have a bit of a run. Um, I need to take it out of transport mode again. And once this loads up, I'm actually gonna lift the mesh part of the uh, header up with the roller on out of the way so I can get at the, uh, the gubbins inside there. Okay. Right, so it should let me do it now. There you are. Get that up out of the way. 
we can get in everything then. Now I know there are some people that watch these videos who are not from the farming world, so I'll just explain what this machine does um, for us. So this is a self-propelled forage harvester. So what we use this for is collecting our grass uh, and putting it in the clamp for silaging to feed the cows over the winter. So we cut the grass with uh, tractors and mowers, make it into a nice big row using a rake. And then this machine comes along, these tines are turning, sort of flick it up into the uh, throat here. This auger attracts everything into the middle, and then inside there there's a drum. The drum pulls it in, or well, the feed rollers I should say, pull it in into a drum that's got a load of knives on it. They chop it down nice and fine, and then it goes out through the big yellow spout into a trailer. Then bring it back to our yard, into a silage clamp like this one, and we tip it up, uh, we roll it, squash all the air out of it, and then put a plastic cover on top of it. Keep the goodness in, keep the air out, and it will ferment and ensile to the silage that we then feed at this time of year. Right, I'm going to give this a bit of a clean, and uh, we'll see how far we get. We've got a couple of cows that have decided to start calving, so we've got to keep a bit of an eye on them as well. Right, we're interrupting foragers because there's a cow here. She's been trying to carve for a little while. She's not getting on with it. He's a bit fluidy. hand washing facilities. There you are, that was one of the simpler carvings we've ever had to do. He's a little bit fluidy. Hopefully she'll lick him off and stimulate him a bit and get him coughing and splurting and get any fluid that is inside him out. But he's very leggy. That's like a calf version of me. Feet. There's feet out in that one as well. That's all happening. This one was born just before dinner time. 2168. You're a good cow, aren't you? Shaking her head at me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you go away, Lou. I'm trying to show you. I'm showing make out any feet, but there is feet. Uh, yeah, you've got to do a bit more than that. She sucked it all back in. Yeah. Well, that's the initial excitement over for a minute. The other cow there is just starting to calve as well. She's got some feet now sticking out the back of her, but we'd like to leave them to get on with it if they will do it on their own. But um, the one there that I just pulled out, she'd been trying to calve all the time that we were in having our dinner. so best to just get that one out whilst we're here. I'm sure she would have had it. Anyway, I want to take the head off of this thing next, so I've got to try and remember how to do that. It involves getting in there, doing stuff. I just remember why we keep the screwdriver in the machine. So there is 
the head, separate from the machine. It's actually really easy to take off. I just forgot when you take off the power shaft, which is down here, you need a screwdriver to take the casing off so you can get at the actual bolt that holds that on, um, which is why we keep the screwdriver with the machine. So I'm hoping I've got enough lead on the power washer to be able to get at this still. So I can do with a bit of a wash. And I can now get right in at the guts of this. I've turned the machine off now. It's obviously going near this. There should be no way it should start up, but you know, never trust it. So we're gonna have a go at this. You can open the front on this, to swing it out. Um, it's something to do with these up here. Uh, I think if you slacken them off, the whole front will swing out around somehow. Take that out. But uh, yes, we'll have a clean up in here. I don't know if these will rotate whilst the machine's off. Dogger's knees, terrible. Right, so yes, you undo this, which releases all this on here, and then you undo this bolt here. I knew it was hidden, and that clamp is what holds on to that piece of tube there, pulls that in tight. So now I've got access to the knife box, oh, the drum, sorry, all that, give it a proper good clean. I can probably spin these feed rollers now, yeah, which is good. I mean, that is, that's filthy, I shouldn't have left this as long as I have to clean it. My bad. But I'm now going to clean it. Just in case anyone is wondering how you get the head off of a John Deere Forager. Or one like this, anyway. You have two little stands. On the back, so there's one there and one there. Both the same, really simple. We'll just put them down to as long as they're at the same height, that's fine. Um, power shaft goes on there. And then we've got the electric and hydraulic connection on that one. And then we've also got an additive line that goes to the um, front of the pick up just because we like to put a lot of additive on for specific silage clamps on this end all you got to do this is the locking pin so you gotta make sure you let that one off am i missing anything is that it power shafts there power shaft sits on that one when you want the thing back round yeah and then this one it'll swing open now it'll swing right round and there is a bar you can put in there and in there to stop it swinging one way or the other but we've got gravity on our side at the moment and like i say to open that up Slacken that one right off. Slacken that one right off. And that uh, lets it swing open. I'm gonna do some washing. Right, I am done here for a minute. John needs a hand moving some carbs. But basically I've cleaned all this out. All the feed rollers in there. I've taken the screwdriver to the underside of these and cleaned them all off so the knives are all clean. So uh, other than I wanna wash the back of that head off tomorrow because that is hanging. Um, other than that, I need to probably speak to Masons or somebody that operates one of these. Um, just for things to look at between seasons because I'm completely green to it. I, is, there's no experience of forager driving in my blood whatsoever other than the bit of second cut I did last year. So I need to know what to do really. But anyway, let's go help John move some cows. I'm absolutely covered in bits of grass and earth and dirt and whatever. I've um, taken the key out of that and also put the isolator on so no one can move it because it's not in a position to be moved. The power shaft's on the floor, the head's open. Um, so no one... We're going to move it without the key. I don't think anyone would try and move it anyway, but there you are. All right, so we're just moving some cows and calves. So I've done a session on AgriWeb. So I finish it and then do a record of a move into the pen that they're going into, which is Dairy Shed 2. So that's, we now know where they are on the system if we ever need to find them. Now we just got to get them out of the pen. Great success. Right, so we just moved those. We've got one in here that was born overnight, last night. We've had three more born during the day today. We're just gonna go and dip one of them. The mother is a little bit tasty, so we managed to drive her into a pen and leave the calf behind so that it's safe to dip the calf because they get a bit feisty when you start touching their calves, as I found out the other day. Hello, cows. I mean no harm. Excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Here we have one fresh out the oven. Do you reckon he'll stand? Down. He's doing a wobble. I don't know why everyone insists on failing me. <laughs> At the time you want to do something. Yeah. So there you are, that calf's 20 minutes old? Yeah, about that. Just dip his navel with iodine. His mother. 
is a little bit stir crazy at the moment. We put him there and then we can put the gate over him like that. And everyone's happy and everyone's safe. So this is a pen of mothers and calves. All tagged apart from that one, so we know who that one is. Somewhere, there's one in here. That one's a couple of hours old. And then there's one in here somewhere as well, isn't there? Yeah, she, she headed off down towards the feedback. So that one might be down in the passage. Well, not fed them, so we can shut them back. Okay. I'll be very quick and very careful, but I want to show you this calf back here. Or are you going to get in my way? Look at this calf here. It belongs to this cow. This little speckly thing. What a beauty. Yes, yeah, it's your calf. And it's a heifer, so it, yeah. it'll be kept, won't it, John? Yeah. Regardless of how poor it is. Oh, I don't give a shit. If it's I'm rubbish, it, it looks cool, so we're going to keep yeah. it. I'm all about um, form over function. That's it. Having a brush there, Cam? A little scratch? Oh, nice. Oh. oh. Hit the spot, John. Just moving this one across to the big pen. 2085 has a bull calf. Oh! I'll do, I'll dip him again while we got the opportunity. Double dipping. He's a nice little chunky thing. Putting her in there saves me having to fill up a tub of silage later when I come in. Right, so there's two more to collect as well. Next one down. Uh. Right there, you can go on down, Cal. Well done. Hey, mate. Welcome to the world. Your mother's gone that way. Heifer calf. Come on. This is a technique I've perfected over many years of just rubbing their back towards their head tends to make them walk. Not all the time, see, they'll stop. Most of the time, they'll just keep on going. This has got a hell of a belly full of milk on it. Hopefully this will be a breeding heifer one day. Anything to say for the camera? Oh. Come on, booty, come on. Yes, we're off. John's just tying a bit of string loosely around its leg so we know which cow it belongs to. Get some special sauce. That one. Thank you very much. Oh, come right this way, calf. A room just for you in here. Oh, well, that was right. Yeah. Right, cattle all sorted out for the night. Me and John will tag all those fresh ones we just moved in the morning. We'll let them get acquainted with their mothers. I just got to move this, so I left it in the worst place possible. That is smaller than that, so it sort of fell off there. But it's got a soft part, so I'll blow that up a minute. And there you are, nicely full of air again. Now just for tonight, I'm going to back it out of the way of the workshop and close the door. Handy this. Airline on a reel. Right, Papa, you can stay there for tonight. John's just feeding out the last bit of food for the cows. Feed them at night, so hopefully calves during the day. That seems to be working. The majority are born in the day. We have one or two at night. So uh, whether there's anything in that or it's just luck, I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video today. Anyone who is more experienced at using a forager than me, please do leave something down in the comments of things I need to look out for. I'll get hold of Mason's, Kings, and also um, John's got a good friend of his who has a forager similar to that one. So we'll sort of ask them the sort of things we need to look out for between seasons because uh, as i said earlier i'm not an experienced forager person whatsoever if you want to head down to the description below um, there's a load of links for our merch all our other socials all of our sponsors all that sort of thing and uh, our other channel back my place so head down there new merch coming soon i won't say any more than that we'll see you on another video very soon cheerio